right, well, what I'm working on here today is a, a 2012 Ford F-150 4x4. And this front hub on here is making a little noise. And I'm figuring that either this needle bearing in there or the rolling ber roller bearing that comes out the other side of that roller bearing is making a little noise. And you can just barely hear it. So when you do something like this, you need to pop this caliper off. It's got two 21 millimeter bolts in there. When you put those back, the torque on those is 148. Okay, there's the torque there. I wrote it down on it. And uh, you need to pop this tie rod end. Uh, the torque on this one is 111. Okay. You need to pop this top one here, and the torque on it when you go back is 85. Uh, you take four of these out. There's four bolts in here. And the torque on those is 148. I guess Ford likes that because the lug nuts are about the same. So you take all this stuff off, you take this 8 millimeter back out here. I don't remember what the torque is on that. <laughs> Didn't write it down. But all of those things have Loctite on them. And when you take it apart, you're going to have to clean it up. I'm going to replace this hub here. And I'm going to go ahead and change this guy out to the actuator, the vacuum actuator for the four-wheel drive. And you got to take this nut. I think this is a 13 millimeter. It's got Loctite on it. It's really tight. Going to have to clean that up, re tight it. Most of these things, uh, like this for example, I heated this up a little bit. You have to be careful when you heat it. You don't want to burn the little rubber part, okay? So I just put a little bit of heat here on the bottom, warmed it up. Same with this one. Hit them with my handy dandy two pound hammer. Now the, the, the tie rod end, I stacked the hammers together. I, I put one up against it like that and hit it with the other so I'd have a better shot so I wouldn't tear up anything. The top one, it came out a lot easier. It's got a little bit of tension on it from the uh, control arm and the spring and just right there at the end of the travel. It has a little bit of tension on it. Of course, it's hanging the brake caliper there. Make sure you hang this brake caliper because you don't want to hang it on the lines. And take all these bolts out, this 10 and this 8 for these uh, for the ABS sensor wire, which it comes with a new ABS sensor wire and harness and all that. So you can take all that out and change it when you do it. But just get all that stuff out of the way. You don't want to be wound up with anything in here in the way while you're working. You'll pinch it, you'll hit it with a hammer, you'll melt it with a torch, whatever. It's easier for it to be gone. So this, uh, these particular hubs, are uh, they have O-rings, so that's helpful in some cases. Uh, so that when it comes time for it to come off, it's not stuck big time. That's how that thing comes off like that. Now, if I look at this needle bearing in here, it's got a little bit of trouble in it. You can see that line in there. It's That just may be the line where it sits at on this uh, on the armature in there, I call it an armature, but this this the CV shaft comes out and it rides on that little bearing, and that just may be where it rides. I don't know, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. Just by looking at it, I wouldn't say that it's messed up, but it's it's hard to tell on things like these, uh, and it also looks like it's something that's easily rebuildable. As long as the teeth on this part aren't all fried, and you could probably drive all that stuff apart and rebuild this thing. I just got a, I just got a new one. Uh, that's what's required for the situation. Which it's a Moog and it's fine. I like Moog stuff. Uh, it's just uh, it says made in China on there, big time. I don't know what to do about that. Not much we can do. Uh, there is one thing that I didn't show, which I just saw it just now, is taking this little guy off here. That. That uh, 13 millimeter nut that fits behind this, which torques down to 20 foot pounds. Now this little guy is, you know, you don't want to destroy this when you take it off. So what I did is I clamped it with these pliers here like this, and I used the pry bar, wherever the pry bar is, there it is. I used the pry bar on the edge of these pliers like this while gripping it and 
tensioned it out from one side to the other and rocked it out. It came out. It wasn't that big of a deal. If you destroy that thing, uh, you can just uh, set it in, the, in some sand or something and beat it out with a socket on the inside. I don't expect everybody to do that, but I suppose it's possible. But uh, when you engage these four-wheel drives uh, while it's spinning, it puts some trouble into these uh, engagement rings in here. And I'll have a look at that when I get it all out. Um, but this thing is just making just a little bit of noise. So we're going to get all this stuff out and replace it. I can see that it's got nice grease in it. And there's I don't see any rust or water intrusion or anything like that. So uh, let me get that thing off and we'll have a look. Alright, so I've got that hub off. i popped that upper ball joint out of there and lean this out. And it clears just barely. I mean by just a hair. So that's good enough for me. Uh, this is what it looks like here uh, when you pop it with uh, when the vacuum whoops when the vacuum hits it it pulls this engagement ring in and out and it's spring loaded pulls that ring in and out and engages these teeth together and when you look at these teeth see these teeth look fine there's nothing wrong with these teeth and this thing has been four-wheel drive occasionally not every day just occasionally so these teeth look pretty good the grease looks good there's no water I haven't really found a problem yet. Now this gasket on the other side, there's places where the gasket is smashed and uh, might have a little wear in it. So it's probably on the road to fail, but it hasn't failed yet. And you can tell by the, by the way this uh, looks here, the gasket has spent a lot of time spinning up against this. In this particular vehicle, you know, getting into the mud and things has probably contributed to some of that because everything is just dusty and muddy and nasty so uh, and on the outside of this thing you can see where some of the the gasket material was coming off it's like got hot and it's coming off so that might have a lot to do with the noise that we heard it's, it was a very light noise going in motions only and it didn't favor any particular side when you wiggled it or anything like that. So this may be our problem. This is the only thing I've found right here. Was that gasket, it looks like it got hot. Oops, that thing don't want to stay, does it? Ugh. Looks like it got hot and started melting. You can see where there's a, a place here where it's busted off. So that's probably where our noise is coming from. I've got a brand new one from Ford. I've got a Ford one. It costs about 100 bucks or so. So it's just a good idea. You're going to get in here and mess with it. Go ahead and replace some of this stuff. You can probably get a new gasket for this. Clean this all up and put it back. But that's not what was requested. So that's, that's kind of how it is. This gear on the inside looks like it's in good shape. That's good gear on the CV shaft it looks good too gear on the hub it's fine really didn't see anything wrong with anything besides that gasket right there that's making noise it's getting hot it's rubbing so that's that's my verdict for this deal here all right so here's the the brand new one and Ford they just put grease all over it I think their intentions are clear that this needs to have grease on it so that's what we got but you can see by looking at the old one and comparing that to the new one that we have quite a bit of gasket erosion that has just burned that gasket off ate it down pretty good so that's uh that's looking like that's going to be uh an answer to what our noise is that lip seal that is i keep calling it a gasket it's a lip seal so i'm going to clean all this stuff up and put this thing back together we'll see how it looks all right so here we go we're going back together I've got this little guy shoved on there there's not much to it you know this goes on top and these holes are going to line up which don't really matter a lot now but uh, I just need to articulate this into this upper control arm ball joint here just need to move it over to it 
which I'm going to do it with two hands. I don't want to ding anything, but uh, it is a pretty simple deal. One step at a time here, right? All right, so I got that thing on there, and I got the three eight millimeter bolt sat down, and I have it connected to a, a, a vacuum pump here. And you can see that when you vacuum it up, that little guy goes in. Now, I don't have oops, I don't have the uh, the hub on there, so it's not perfectly straight. So when you straighten it up, it goes a little farther on. Now, the way I like to do this is I like to put some vacuum on it and get those splines lined up okay and leave it and let it let it sit here you know it's got 10 you know 10 15 psi of stuff on there holding it okay carefully set that guy down and then put all this together so that when you uh when you put this nut on here and put all this hub and stuff on there you have it closely aligned all right and the edge of this gear is not out of alignment with the CV shaft and, and you pull this, tighten this up, pull it towards it and it goes and dings the edge of it or messes it up or something like that. So we don't want to do that. So we'll put it in the activated state like this and then that guarantees that we're not going to have a problem. Of course, I'm sure somebody could mess it up, but we at least like to try to not to fail, right? So let's, let's get that hub and have a look at it and see how things are looking. All right, so I got everything on there. Everybody looks happy. Okay, I still got a vacuum on my vacuum pump, so still vacuumed, still engaged. All right, the and once I let loose of that thing, then it'll lock these two together. Okay, all right, and that's how it's designed to work. I'm gonna let it loose, let these two lock, and then I'll be able to torque this little guy down to 20 foot-pounds. And then I'll torque these other ones down. I've already went over the torque once, but, you know, they're 148 for the big ones. That one's 85. This is 111. This one's 20. Uh, you know, I, these are pretty close to that. I mean, I, I just tighten these down with a regular ratchet, and I know how to do that, so that's not a problem. Uh, I hope this helps someone and gave them a good idea about what's going on here and how to do this and, and how to not fail. Uh, if anybody has any suggestions or comments, please let me know. Y'all take it easy. Have a good day.